Welcome back to another episode of The Whale Table. We are actually out here trout fishing, but um, while we were stalking through the bush here and trying to get to the next fishing hole, we stumbled across a whole bunch of really exciting stuff. It's spring here in New Zealand, so a lot of um, the edible plants in the bush are starting to throw their new shoots. And so uh, we found pico pico fern, and we found suffragic tips and a few other things um, that will make a really beautiful wild table meal. Going to do some foraging. These here are hen and chicken ferns, and they're abundant throughout this little area. What's really cool about hen and chicken ferns is that this time of year, in spring in New Zealand, they throw the new fronds um, that will grow into these new leaves. And um, when they're still curled up, the little thing that you can harvest on them is called pico pico, which even amongst early Maori was already considered a delicacy. Pico pico basically is this. So this here is the young, unfurled front of the hen and chicken fern. I'm super stoked that I've come across this patch because pico pico is delicious and it's something I've been looking for in a substantial foragable, foragable amount for quite some time. All right, so New Zealand obviously has a vast number of uh, different types of fern, and so to identify the correct fern is vitally important because some ferns are actually poisonous. So, the hen and chicken fern is actually quite easy to identify. It has quite a feathery leaf, and sometimes on the tips of the leaves, you have these tiny little shoots that are coming off, um, which is why it's called the hen and chicken fern. So it's like the hen is the, the big leaf, and then the little chicks are these tiny little um, wispy sprouts that are coming off the leaf. It almost looks like a new leaf growing off the existing leaf. Really easy to identify, but very important that you identify it correctly. What we're looking for is, is the, the front as it's just uncurling. This is already a little far gone. So we're actually a little bit late to the party on this one, but I think this will still be delicious and edible. Ideally you want to get them as they're sort of still fully curled tight and they just start to stretch themselves out into new fronts. Pico pico. So we're just going to do a little bit more searching. I'm going to fill up my blicky and um, yeah, take home some beautiful fresh pico pico. What a find. I'm stoked. Because the other thing is of course, now that I know that they're here, I can come back here every single year in spring and harvest more pico pico. Here's another delicacy from the bush. This here is the sprout of the supplejack vine. This here being supplejack. Really strong woody vine. The only part of this vine that's really soft and tender is the very tip. Again in spring it starts to throw these like beautiful little tips and they taste like like bean or pea. It has that really sort of legumey fresh green flavor to it. I really like these. Might take a few of these home as well. I've always tried, wanted to try to pickle them, so I'm taking home a few supplejack tips and um, see what we can do with them. Such a beautiful little valley down here. Um, as we're kind of walking along as well, I've been spotting these beautiful little patches of watercress, which has got to be one of the most delicious, fresh, 
water vegetables that you can source anyway. This here is the watercress. Really, really well known and understood plants amongst Māori. And it's just, a, it's just a gorgeous, beautiful tasting plant. I really, really like harvesting watercress. As always with foraging, the rule is just don't take everything. Leave something, leave something to grow, leave something for other people. Take what you need. That was such a beautiful day by the river. We had such a good time um, just playing around in fresh water. And I'm so stoked that we found these beautiful, beautiful, fresh ingredients right by the river. So we've taken it back here, just lit a fire in the barbecue. We're gonna get a chicken on there. Um, and we're gonna uh, prepare these vegetables um, for eating. Um, we're gonna clean the pico pico and we're gonna clean um, the watercress. And then we're gonna make a beautiful Asian style green stir fry with that. So these young pico pico are uh, super tender and delicious, um, but they're covered in a, in a kind of a, a brown fuzzy stuff on the outside. The brown fuzzy stuff can add a little bit of a bitter flavor to the whole thing, so we gotta make sure that we just rub as much of that off um, before cooking as we can. Uh, so pretty much all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the pico pico, I'm just gonna um, get it wet in a bowl of water, and just with my fingers I'm just gonna rub the brown stuff right off. All right, so we're here we have the fresh watercress, and watercress being one of those vegetables that actually grows in the stream itself, um, I always try to make sure that we clean it really thoroughly. Uh, generally, you'll find that there's always a lot of like sand and that kind of stuff amongst the leaves, which if, once you give it a vigorous washing, you get rid of that. And then also, some of the thicker stems are already starting to grow some roots. Um, so usually, some of the thicker, thicker stems I tend to cut out of the middle, uh, just because it just makes for a little bit nicer eating when you haven't got the roots in it. The supple jack, I ended up finding only the one single tip. Um, it's not really enough to make a whole meal off on its own, but we're just simply going to add it to the stir fry um, because it goes beautifully with the watercress and the pickle pickle. I'm just going to chop that real fine and add it into it. Not every good thing, but a lot of good things start with a good fire. So we've made a nice fire from uh, matured oak wood in the Broil King. Um, I'm going to inset the, uh, the holder and the pan for the water in a second. I'm going to fill that full of water and we're going to get a nice organic chicken on there. And I'm just going to paint it with a little uh, marinade that I made out of soy sauce, black bean sauce, garlic, a little bit of sesame oil, um, and a little bit of mirin, which is a, um, a, a kind of a rice vinegar. Um, we're just going to paint that and then chuck it in the broil can and we're going to leave it in there for about an hour or so just to cook over a medium heat um, and we let the steam really just moisten up and juice, juicing up that chicken. So with the veggies all cleaned and prepped I head into the kitchen. I slice up some onion and some garlic and then I add the garlic and a good amount of ginger and some chili to a mortar and pestle and smash it. Then I add the onion pico pico and sliced up suffragex bra to a heavy cast iron pot and over a medium heat get everything sizzling. Once the onions are starting to go translucent, I add a mix of black bean sauce, tamari sauce and sesame oil to the pan to introduce some flavor. I find the black bean sauce especially adds a rich aroma. Once everything had a little time to simmer away and absorb flavor, I turn down the heat and add some sesame seed. And finally, a good bunch of watercress. Watercress being one of those greens that wilts away to almost nothing once exposed to heat, so don't be shy about adding a good amount. Alright, so while the greens are simmering away in the kitchen, I've just restoked the fire to get some heat cranking. The chicken's been in there for an hour now, it's nice and juicy and moist. Now we're just going to get it onto some fire to give it some crisp brown and uh, finish that off.
food. You know, knowing where your food comes from to me is such an important thing. Um, and with the goal, my goal being to feed myself 100% from everything that I can hunt, fish, forage and grow my own. Um, it's so important to find things that are substantial, you know, and to have found this like patch of hen chick ferns that is, that is so abundant that I know that I can go back every single year and harvest a good amount of pico pico from that one patch that's local to me. It's just priceless. You know, there's, there's wild foods and there's certain things that are novel and that you find only once and it's cool. But then there's those things that you can return to time after time after time. Um, and that's really, that's really what it's about for me is, is the journey of you know, discovering how you can feed yourself from the wild. Like our ancestors did.